My name is Holly Ann Mitchell. I once read a poem about a little girl who held her hand out for a cube of sugar, and every time she brought it to her lips, she tasted salt. And once again, she'd hold her little hand out for sugar, but time and again, she would be greeted with salt. Yet every once in a rare, rare while, she'd hold her hand out and taste that sweet sugar, and it kept her coming back. Hopeful. That was the relationship I had with my father. Playing with my father was like playing with a beautiful tiger. Even though we were laughing, I was holding my breath for fear of releasing his anger. My father was ridiculously handsome, funny, charming. He played the drums. I remember sitting on his lap as a baby while we made music together. He took good care of his body. His health was important to him. But though his body was healthy, his mind betrayed him. He slept with a gun under the headboard and suffered from night terrors. I remember when I was 13 years old, he locked himself in the bathroom, threatening to commit suicide. My mother gathered us up and took us to Nana's house. We didn't go home that night. I wondered if we'd find him dead. I hated his darkness and wanted to heal it at the same time. As I think back on my memories of my father, it wasn't all salt. Some of it was sugar. My favorite memory of my father was when I came home from school and the house was shaking with rock and roll. I asked him who the singer was, and he says, "Jimi Hendrix." I didn't know who that was. He says, "Hold on," and he rolls up the carpet. A blues guitar begins to play. There's a red house over yonder, and that's where my baby stays. He tells me to stand on his feet, and we dance together. And I remember, for one of the few times in his life, that he was happy. My father had so many regrets. There were so many things he wanted to do and be, but he never got the chance. And I believe that he willed his body to create the cancer. That would ultimately take his life a year and a half ago. I remember walking into the hotel room, seeing my father for the last time. His lower body was swollen with fluid, and his upper body was emaciated. I slipped my hand inside the mess of tubes and found his hand and grabbed it hard. "I'm sorry, baby," he says to me. "I'm sorry I wasn't more." "Oh, Dad," I said. Smiling, fifty percent of me is you, so I think you did okay. He laughed, and in that moment of laughter, I saw his soul, and our souls touched, and any anger or pain that I had held for him was gone, and there was only love. I never knew that the greatest love story of my life would be the one I had with my father. See, his body and his nervous system were incapable of loving me the way that his soul really wanted to. And after his passing, I understand now that inside of every body, every nervous system, there's a soul just trying to peek through, but it gets obscured by trauma. And every now and again, when we're laughing, or dancing, or singing, or crying. The soul peeks through, and we see each other. I imagine him now as the child he might have been if he hadn't been born into a long line of abusers. But his legacy is me now, and it's a legacy of healing and love and music and the courage to live my life without any regrets. And I am so grateful to be his daughter. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you.